me only here and welcome back to another video this time we're going to quickly look at the launch trailer we're going to mute this and go through it of course there'll be a link to uh, the actual trailer in multiple languages in the description of the video go check that out but essentially this trailer hit today this is the launch trailer for final fantasy 14 typically the launch trailers sometimes show too much so a bit of a preface to this if you're afraid of spoilers or at least minor spoilers for the storyline this might not be good uh, for you to watch, so bear that in mind. I'll give you a couple of seconds to switch off. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to go through this, maybe talk about a few of the bits that really took my uh, interest and things that surprised me. And uh, yeah, let's just go through this. It's 4 minutes 21 seconds, including like the intro of a black screen with the Peggy logo. We go straight in then. We've got some voiceover, of course, from Alice at the start. Uh, basically saying we're going on an adventure and we might be able to actually, you know, look forward to uh, relaxation rather than saving the world. Obviously, the boat then to Dawn Trail to Tuli Alal is going to leave from Old Charlian. Uh, this was kind of predicted, you know, it's uh, sort of a main hub. Uh, it's also where Aaron Veal also did a lot of the commuting between the new world and, of course, <laughs> our known world. And uh, old Charlie and looks really good. It looks really good, doesn't it? As usual. The graphics update then in a lot of this is going to be quite prevalent. You're going to see a lot of lighting changes and things like that that aren't currently available in the game. Especially with um, with the actual city as well. Um, the draw distance is much higher. That's something else that they talked about at length in one of the dev panels a while ago during the EU Fan Fest um, sort of stage appearance. But uh, yeah, it is really nice to see these graphical changes. Of course, we've got all sorts of hubbub activity down by the dockside as we are preparing for our adventure. We've got familiar faces waving goodbye to us. We've got Grahatias waving away, uh, and Tataru, and then uh, there's Ojika. And then obviously we've got, um, you know, Mummy and Daddy, <laughs> to Alphano and Alice, and uh, other characters you might remember as well as they wave off. On our journey and that boat is absolutely speeding off into her into the horizon we physically cannot wait for the vacation any longer but of course much like many of the warrior of lights adventures on sea we have a similar situation before as when we entered to Stormblood with a terrible storm. Now, whether or not there is something causing this storm, if there's any more dangers to be uh, worried about, no idea, but presumably because the first dungeon is at level 91 and is actually uh, inside uh, the new world, um, there isn't a dungeon associated with this. It's not to say that there's nothing like duty related to this. Obviously, our character by Meteor here running to the aid of uh, obviously the Scions here. We've got Alice, Alphano, Wukla, Martin, Aaron Veal basically bracing themselves for the storm and this is the first proper time we've seen their models in their new sort of upgraded form of course looking absolutely fantastic i think most people will agree uh, the way that the wet textures look on those uh, outfits is great and um, they've really paid a lot of attention to detail on this there's a bit of a strange cut here with the storm getting a little bit more ferocious and knocking Alice presumably nearly overboard, although it cuts very briefly here to obviously being saved, uh, presumably, um, by Alphano as it straight away cuts to us arriving safely. And there we are. Actually, no, this is a this is leaving, isn't it? This is us on our embarking from old Charlie and on our adventure, sorry. And we're smiling. Wuklamat's talking about taking over basically as the new seat of Tuli Alal herself. And um, yeah, we got a bird fly by. Really nice looking bird. Blue footed booby chilling out there. Looking forward to those blue skies and clear seas. Look at that. It's beautiful. Erinville does a lot of back talking here sort of narration so maybe Aaron Veal will be involved in the narration of each of the zones or something I don't know typically they have narration introducing a lot of the zones don't they uh it was Emmett before so maybe we'll get some more of that then we got uh, obviously Tulialal in Tural this is the head of the entire kingdom basically we've seen this in the media tour build it never fails to look you know 
any less impressive on every shot I see of it. It's a big, sprawling city full of stuff. And as we start to hot up into the 55 seconds range into the trailer, we start to see what life is actually like. We've got all of the different races. Obviously, Tulialal is a diverse city full of different races working together. Prior to the unification of the entire kingdom, obviously a lot of these people were separated, and then the unification of this into one kingdom over many, many hundreds of years, presumably into the nation we know as the new world now, as, as Tural, obviously is comprised of all of these people working together. So that means all of the foods, different tacos and, you know, satay skewers and Rothgar chilling out there with mamal jar of all different types, moblins. We've obviously got the Palu Palu chilling out here as well. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of uh, interesting tribal quests related to these guys. We've got Yaktel here, which is um, a really beautiful place. It's something that I wish that we would have had access to during the media tour, but it wasn't one of the zones we did. But it's basically this dense jungle with spaces in between, lots of sea notes or cenotes or, you know, water pools, basically, in this uh, sort of forest area. Lots of different, diverse biomes in this expansion you'll see but the lighting here in the shadows really demonstrating the true power of this updated version of final fantasy 14 it says the road to adventure beckons once more and we have this mountain in urca parcha which is supposed to be very integral to the storyline presumably there's a dungeon involved with this um obviously shown here on the adventure to find artifacts or something related to the rite of succession okay so this is from the level 91 dungeon we've got off of the ferry on this uh, you know mud stream and we're basically disembarking this is part of the dungeon using trusts of course there's krile there as pictomancer alphano as sage we've got wook Lamat as our intrepid right during the media tour it was classed as an intrepid but a warrior basically and of course, our main character as Meteor is demonstrating as a viper here. All of this foliage is absolutely beautiful to see in action. We've got obviously some of the monsters in here with Kryle splashing things with neon paint. It is really such a vibrant job. I personally can't wait to do it. This then, in a completely different uh, sort of change of pace, this is uh, in Shaloni, right? This must be one of the dungeons in Shaloni. So we've got this large swole cactuar with all these barbs on the side of the arena, um, basically making cactuses grow. Presumably this means you hide behind said cactus or something like that. There seems to be spines everywhere. And then AoE circles if you just sort of squint a little bit, squint your eyes, you can just about see that. It says, the promise of a thrilling journey. Yes, and we've got some background here of some stone. This is obviously the Mamul Jaja, Mamul Jaja, rather, uh, Galul Jaja, that's his name, uh, who's the current leader, talking about, with his narration here, about the right of succession, how he's basically putting together this trial, um, you know, to see who will take over the throne, right? The Dawn Throne or whatever it's called, with all of the different contenders here that have all been named during the live letter, uh, if you've seen that really, really cool stuff. And we've got some really cool looking armor here with like feathers and things like that. Beautiful, beautiful like garb. I, I want all of this glam, I really do. Very cool stuff. And uh, as he's talking about you know, what's coming next. Uh, these two different heads, apparently during the live letter, have two different voice actors. So we have the basically the wise sage one and then the one that's, I think it's Resolve and, what's it called? The head of Resolve and the head of uh, Wisdom or something? I forget. Basically, they have two different personalities, two different voice actors for the two-headed Mamulja. There is actually another Mamulja who is also sharing voice actors uh, for uh, two different heads. And it says, and a contest to determine the, uh, the ruler of a nation and we've got the throne room here as a backdrop so this is all about the right of succession and these different contenders either you know adopted into the family of galul uh, jaja or obviously through a tournament i believe one of them uh, won the right to take part in the tournament um you know the right of succession trial by winning a winning a, a fighting tournament right as far as we know these really really cool backdrops with the lighting hitting the underside of their skin it's beautiful isn't it really beautiful 
Then I've got, of course, we've got Kayona, who uh, I don't really know anything about. He's one of the people also in the running for it. He, he says here that he's, you know, wanting to make a better Tural. Um, he'll be an interesting character, that cat boy. We've obviously got another contender here. This zone then looking absolutely beautiful. This is, I think, Yaktel as well. Um, judging by the different sort of foliage here, more sort of luminescent sections. Um, we've got a Viera here. I'm not sure who they are, if they're related in any way. But as you can see, this person has just defeated this one. Probably, you know, talking about those that right of succession and, you know, taking um, by force, right? Taking the nation by force. Whereas Wuklamat seems to be in the right of succession um, in like a birthright sort of sense. Um to be a shining sort of beacon for the future. So they all have different aspirations for the throne and what it would become and how to lead people. So it's quite an interesting storyline to begin with. It's not exactly like killing gods, the storyline, much like what we've done before. Um, so on that regard, I think a lot of people are probably a bit apprehensive about what the storyline is going to feel like, but this is not going to be just a simple adventure where we you know, tire of, of just the vacation after a while. It's probably going to have its twists and turns. We've got characters here, obviously, moving up on the back of Alpaca into Urkapacha. So here we can clearly see the border between Shaloni with the cactuses and the dust and the deserts, uh, the Wild Westy type zone, seamlessly transitioning into Urkapacha. So that makes more sense of how that connects now, at least to me, mentally. We got Wuklamat here clashing here in again more of these cutscenes. Presumably, we're going to see a lot of this. A path to discovery, it says here. And then they're finding these strange artifacts, these like tomes. Maybe they're retelling the storyline of like the past. I don't know. There's a lot of hidden history, isn't there? There's also some glowy bit on here. Maybe this is a keystone to something, a bigger secret. We've got Valamar Valagarmanda which is the new trial, the new main sort of thing to be worried about that's uh, confirmed to have a savage, uh, sorry, an extreme version of it, as well as a normal mode frozen here in some kind of ruins. So presumably during the process of trying to figure out uh, the various artifacts and things through the right of succession and exploration, this becomes unfrozen and a big threat to the world um yeah a rich tapestry of history we've got a beautiful picture there behind there that's kind of hidden of uh of Tural and Tulialal here very very nice sort of tapestry and then we've got that section there which is very briefly the um the throne room i believe is over this direction like with the big building i remember walking down here i think I think this is what this is in Tural, in Tulialal, rather, the city. But this could be somewhere else. I remember these pillars, though. Uh, obviously, they're all the different peoples here. So I think this is still in Tulialal. Then we have this section here, which could be on the back of the boat being pulled by a hippo or something. Uh, I, think, I think that's what was happening in the level 91 dungeon. We've got Aaron Veal, obviously Alfie. Warrior of Light in this really cool looking outfit. Wuklamat looking a little bit sort of like dejected maybe? Kryl and uh, Alice at the front there as they're going down this river. Obviously a lot of the dirigibles are the only way to travel around the world. So they've got these dirigible balloons. There's dirigible sort of um, docking stations as they've shown us before. Familiar campsite scene then where everyone's chilling out and talking about the adventures. Very reminiscent of Heavens with this. Um, yeah, we've got a Palu Palu character here lying on their front. That looks quite comfortable, actually. Uh, Coloured with the hearts and minds of a diverse people. Yeah, and we've got obviously bits there of all of the different zones behind it. And at Journey's End, the legendary city of gold. Now, it actually says uh, the people lived as gods. Now, this looks like the entrance to Solution 9, so presumably there's a, a way inside here. So maybe the city of gold that we keep hearing so much about is more of um, something to do with elegant technology. This is very elegant. Some kind of sealed gate in, in inside here. As you'll see in a second, it seems to be just this flow of gold light. And there's a flashback sequence here of characters who basically uh, never age, never die, and uh, basically sacrificed everything for, for you know, that, that potential future. 
uh, obviously tier four scenes. I hope we get to see a lot more context for that. But it shows the ceiling of this door, but a road will be a difficult one. And then we have this, which is an outdoor shot uh, looking towards Heritage uh, Found, I believe. So there's like a train line that goes in here, a very literal Thunderdome. Uh, so maybe that's the reason why no one has gone into Solution 9. Maybe, we're, you know, when we think about Solution 9, surely everybody would live there, right? With all of that cyber tech. So presumably it's sealed off because of Heritage Found being full of Levin and this very literal Thunderdome. Then we've got this, which looks like there's a dungeon to get into Solution 9. This is very much duty content, as you can see, with the four uh, player, you know, composition we've got the sort of water the choppy water at the side there and various monsters within we also have we need to slow down the footage quite a bit here uh playback speed let's drop that down to zero two five because we've got a first look at some bosses they go through is very quickly of course we have a very familiar model this looks like a cybernetic eden model or a reskin of eden we have some like cybernetic update displays of like there seems to be some kind of heart or something or, or energy sphere around some kind of organism if it's this. So it's like a test or something, maybe some kind of defense system. Definitely looks like some kind of test facility. It says fraught with untold perils. Now we're running at lower frames per second because we've slowed it all the way down here. But it's really important because a lot of these scenes flash very quickly. This then is a huge scene where uh, out of the Thunderdome, let's call it, is an enormous fleet of neon-clad, well, there's a heli battleship out of the Avengers, and then we've got this sort of floating platform with a gun on it that looks straight out of, well, it looks straight out of Halo, doesn't it? Absolutely awesome, these hover hover bikes with guns on them. I would love that to be a mount, but then I say that about everything. We've got all these almost runes, right? This very much re reminds me of the Allegan stuff before, or maybe like the Void Arc, that kind of stuff. It very much looks like either Marky technology or Allegan, that kind of direction. And we get closer close-ups of these amazing machines and the armor that they're wearing which again looks very similar to the troopers that we saw in a certain uh set of content in uh in the last expansion before this one right with the um with the tribal quest and indeed the dungeons uh when meteon visited certain worlds and saw people who in the, like futuristic people so a lot of people are wondering if this is something to do with a rejoining of another shard during the calamity of of thunder right um yeah i have no idea then we get a very brief which is why we're running this so slow of another boss here being absolutely butchered by the viper we're at the sort of doorway to maybe solution nine is like a broken down door maybe we found a way in the start of a dungeon to get into that particular zone and this very unhappy looking let's call him uh doggy hellhound dog reskin we've got valagarmander uh the trial we saw a bit of this on the live letter today when yoshi p pulled this and died deliberately um it apparently has lots of different forms yeah it looks incredible doesn't it so there's presumably different elements we saw fire when yoshi p pulled it so maybe this is it goes through all of the different elements or something we've got thunder here very clearly with the thundercloud mechanic that seems very similar to ramu uh, with 11 strikes and the, and the clouds as you can see uh, we've also got feathers here which reminds me a bit of uh, of obviously like either a phoenix sort of battle or we've uh, we've also got people raised up here so one of the uh, some of those like places you stand in is like topography based mechanics so if you've got a certain buff maybe you go up so that you don't get struck by lightning and die that sort of mechanic idea very cool actually we got a close-up of Wook Lamart and the team as they go through somewhere with cubes, probably related to the same area. It's hard to see. They've deliberately got this nice close shot. And all we can do is kind of speculate as to what this scenery is. And then we have this, which very much looks like the logo, doesn't it? So that's the fabled city of gold. Turns out it was just a computer program, like a massive PC. Uh, simulation or something it would fit quite well 
and then the fabled city of gold and Kral is very much interested in that side of thing because of what Galuf had uh, had written all those, those years ago. This armor I desperately need. Uh, we have something similar to this that looks like maybe the raid gear uh, that was shown on a live letter today. This stuff looks awesome. I know these guys are probably going to be trying to kill us, but I would imagine these are natives to Solution 9 protecting it. Maybe they're robots, like androids or something. I have no idea, but those are some cool-ass outfits. It's like taking the PvP gear, the Lost Elegant stuff, up to 11, isn't it? And speaking of which, I guess that would fit in really, really well, right? The Lost Elegant kind of thing. And then there's more of these fleets of floating gun hover ships, and we've got a close-up of one of those troopers firing a gun repeatedly. It's like blaster, just keeps on blasting. This is an interesting one, though. This looks like Tuli Alal, and I didn't see this the first time I watched the trailer, uh, being invaded by these people. So whatever we did, or maybe this happens just, you know, as a as a side of this, maybe we don't have anything to do with this, but they just attack and then we investigate and retaliate. But as you can see, places are on fire in the market district uh, as these guys come past and blast with lightning. Very interesting. And then it's got we've got troopers on the floor fighting against Mamulja. People, yeah, it, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that sort of marks up. Uh, presumably, a much later part of the storyline, not directly uh, at the start with uh, the right of succession, or maybe they think that they've got a right to succession themselves. I don't know. And then Wuklamat slamming down the axe there, and then of course we've got the warrior of light or meteor chilling out. It says warriors of light on this backdrop of some more of that architecture of uh, flame embers passing by and we got Aaron Veal looking back towards the camera as we're in some kind of underground area there was an underground sort of cave uh cenote or cenote uh dungeon mentioned with all kinds of ruins and doors and things uh we've got Wuklamat doing something here this is cool I don't know what this is, but this seems to be another boss within whatever that Solution 9 related dungeon is. We've got these like shield force field things and then laser beams and then this giant robot. It looks intense, doesn't it? Absolutely intense. And then those laser beam things have like explosions next to them. Yeah. And then we see this, which is the... Um, the maiden right the person that we don't really know anything about suspicion is that this is something to do with the convocation of 14 uh one of the seats that we don't know about or haven't seen very interesting outfits i do like the necklace actually uh i just i, I want a hairstyle we've got another robot here in a, another arena that's very hard to kind of figure out what's going on this looks like this is taking part in Alexandria. So on the live letter, I'll put a picture up very quickly. They showed this picture, which was said to be inside um, Heritage Found, right? And Heritage Found, basically, <laughs> from what we could tell, is uh, the ruins of Alexandria from Final Fantasy IX. In fact, if you line up the pictures to the original Alexandria, you can actually get pretty close to that, as Frosty TV discovered with his tweet. Um, but yeah, this looks to be more of the same, right? So, interesting. And it would make sense that Heritage Found would uh, would have this being that it's, you know, full of Levin, right? There's a lot we don't know about. This is a cool boss with like an arm mechanic. It says, are you prepared to answer the call? To which I think most people will say yes, but give me all of the glamour and mounts. Um, especially with some of the new things that we've seen, like the light cycles and things. This then, we've got, um, obviously, a Pictomancer fighting against a giant furry crab. <laughs> I want the furry crab as a mount, even though it's getting blasted there, which is brilliant. And then they do a really clever transition to a place in Yaktel. So this is underneath the forest canopy. I don't know if this is in a dungeon or if this is in the open zone, but, of course, we've got more shots there. We've got another monster or boss that we've seen that model hundreds of times before. It looks a lot more shiny, a lot more detailed. And then Wuklama is big axing it in the face, axing it a question. Then we've got Astro doing its Astro things. Nice look at some of the jobs here. We've got Bard doing its thing. 
And then we've got this. Now, this is the thing I think most people will be trying to figure out what it is. To me, it looks like an egg timer. They do refer to it, I think, in the dialogue as some form of key. Now, as to what it's a key to, presumably Solution 9, and the fact it's an egg timer or something like that, I don't know. It looks like it's some kind of artifact of, of significant power. Maybe that's what they were trying to find in the Rite of Succession, or maybe that's what they stumbled upon. I have no idea, but it's definitely something uh, that we haven't seen before in the way it's designed. Then we get a look at Shaloni. Now, Shaloni is probably one of the hidden gems that obviously we haven't seen much of, just a concept art. We've got a freaking saloon right here with hitching posts for your chocobo or your horse, question mark. And then we've got these like yaks here, these furry backed yaks. Um, we've got a cactuar sign down here various npcs in that sort of wild west sort of thing yeah shaloni is somewhere that i didn't think i'd be that interested in but it's it's just captivating isn't it the difference in different biomes i can't wait to see more it just looks crazy it looks like something like we're, we're playing back to the future <laughs> okay so this i think is solution nine suspended above heritage found that's my belief i think that solution nine is a city that's a big capsule that was sealed away because the people thought that they could use the energy from whatever they were siphoning to basically um or sapping the land to live forever and never die and never age in their own little capsule that's my theory um there's lots of theories out there can i just point out these trees are awesome i love the like cylindrical tree shape i want that in my garden there's a lot of foliage I'd love as housing items, but uh, yeah, that is definitely something nutso going up there, and presumably the reason that the you know heritage found is the way it is, bathed in leaven. We've got another look at this like see, let's call it the seal door, which is clearly like where the city of gold gets its name from, where the people fled. We've also got all of the scions here, pretty much all of the people involved all together this time. There's been a bit of talk about Thancred and Orianj going you know going for a different team supporting different people but i think in this it's much later when we've got past the point of yeah this isn't just about the right of succession anymore there's a greater storyline here than what we presumed again that's why i said this is quite spoilery uh because it definitely gives you a glimpse into something i didn't think we would that's valagarmanda in another one of its forms i presume which looks just mad whether or not this is part of you know like when you do susan o when it gets really big or any of those sort of things where where you basically do a a clicky quick 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 time action section and then even if you succeed you see it go massive and do one of its special moves that's kind of what this reminds me of with the wall of fire there and uh, obviously people using cds to survive yeah i think that's definitely what that is some kind of cut scene we've got the scene here where uh, two Mamulja are basically trading the artifact, uh, which is very interesting. Now, my first thought was, is this guy dead? I thought he was lying on the floor, but then I saw his feet. So he's just being traded this. So I don't know what this item is. It's got very big significance, right? A lot of plot significance as to what that is. It does start glowing, though. So presumably it started glowing because the person's hand that it is in is fit for rule? Because why wouldn't it glow in anyone else's hand? That's the question, right? So that's my theory. Obviously, Kryle looking fantastic with this graphics update, realizing what the City of Gold actually is. Aaron Veal looking on, surprised, looking upwards probably at Solution 9 and uh, in pure disbelief. And then we've got this where... We're in presumably Solution 9 or the Entrance 2, and we've got this all-weird spell artifacting like it's coming alive. Uh, so maybe this is the key to the door to unseal the city. That's my guess. Uh, this backdrop does look like we're in the sky, though. Or maybe we're on, well, maybe we're on top of one of those giant helipad spaceship things. Because the sky is there, right? I have no idea. Will Clement wanting to become leader at all costs, you know, for everyone, for a better mankind, better future, yada yada. 
that key is very much the key. It's like a keystone to uh, to the plot line. And then we get the Dawn Trail logo with some more discussion. And just when you think it couldn't get any more exciting, we then get this shot of the maiden once again, uh, where she's basically talking to the player character, the Warrior of Light, and holding out her hand, which is interesting. This character design is awesome, by the way. I love the fact that there are still some secrets Although we do seem to see her quite regularly. We get lots of shots of all of our friends and colleagues and the journey thus far sort of thing. So I don't know. I don't know who that character was there. We've got lots of familiar faces with the Scions. Hmm. There's a lot to dissect there. Different scenes that we had we just haven't seen yet. Ishtola, obviously. Amazing. Bit of a stinian there, blending together. I love the way they've done this. Actually, they've blended all of those scenes together. It looks really cool. And then, of course, we get the Warrior of Light panning towards the camera. And there we go. There's the Dawn Trail logo. So the things for me to just get very excited for, all of the battle content, honestly, it looks amazing. I can't wait to visit Shaloni in particular and any of the zones. And this has definitely got my... um. I don't know, my curiosity, my anticipation is uh, is palpable, quite honestly. But the thing I'm most excited for is trying to figure out who she is, uh, who she is, the maiden. Because that's, uh, that's significant, isn't it? But yeah, looks like a really cool expansion. I do think this trailer probably shows a little bit too much. They always do, um, which is why I gave the warning at the start. But uh, what, have, what have I missed from this? Anybody got any ideas of what specific uh, plot lines could be what do you think about this is it elegant is it marky is it uh you know the the rejoining of a shard and somehow surviving during the calamity of of thunder i don't know lots of questions but we've only got a few more weeks to answer them anyway thank you so much for watching link in the description to the full trailer go watch it yourself it is an absolute masterpiece much like most of the content they've put out recently. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.